So Sasha and I are taking a bit of a vacation this week and we're going to Cedar Point in Sandusky, Ohio. We just arrived at the campground check-in and we're gonna go check into a campsite and then we're gonna take you around a little bit of the park. So Sasha and I got uh, season passes, which gives us early entry. We can go in an hour and 15 minutes early. Well, really you can go in an hour early, but I guess they'll start letting you in at 8.45, but the rides don't open until nine. And then everyone else is allowed in at 10. Gives you a little bit of time to get on a ride that you might not be able to otherwise. I went yesterday and spent about an hour waiting for each big ride, like the, the roller coasters, that's what I'm here for. So I'm hoping the ride yesterday, which is called Steel Vengeance, that was about a two hour wait. I might be able to get on maybe in less than an hour. It would be great if I could get on the ride off of it and get to another one before 10 o'clock so I can avoid the lines. And then I'll just spend the rest of the day doing whatever I can to get on rides. So I can't record on the rides. That's against the rules. They're pretty strict about it because I guess they've had too many problems with people losing their cell phones on the, on the ride and they fly off and hit people. So they're, they're really strict about it. They warn you about it. If they catch you doing it, they will kick you out of the park. So I'm not gonna mess around with that. They have official like first person perspective videos on their website. I'll leave links to them in the description below. It's almost time to enter. So I'm gonna go over a wait in line and go in and see how many rides I can ride today. Sasha's gonna be enjoying the water park. I like the roller coasters, she likes the water park. So I'm actually here at 8.30. And there's already a line forming across the street. So last night I mapped out my route a little bit. The first one that I'm gonna go to is Steel Vengeance because that had the longest wait time. And I didn't think it looked very cool until I watched the video of it and it looks really cool. So if possible, I'll even ride it twice. So that worked pretty well. I got in and there's not too many people here. I'm headed straight for Steel Vengeance. It's so nice when it's empty here. There's no one else to fight with. So that's the ride I'm going on now. I also want to do Maverick too. All right, apparently I came to the wrong spot. This is the train station. That's the ride right there. I gotta see how to get over there. All right, this appears to be it. Across the railroad and on Steel Vengeance. All right, Steel Vengeance does not have early entry. That's disappointing. Also, they require that all of your stuff gets left behind. So they have lockers out front. You have to put all your keys, wallets, phones, everything in it. You can't have anything on the ride. So I think I'll have to come back later and do that. So now I'm gonna go find another ride that has early entry, which I saw people lining up over at Maverick, which also looks pretty good. So I'll check that out first, I guess. This is a rare sight. Walk right through. Just one, can I do the front? Got the front. Alright, I gotta board now. I'll see you in a minute. So that was much better than I expected. I'm headed off to Millennium Forest next. There's already a one hour wait and it's only 9.15 a.m. So I better get that out of the way before it gets too late. I think that was a two hour wait yesterday too. So I'm gonna head that way and wait in line. Hi guys. Hi. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so that was so much fun that I think I'm going to do it again. But it's uh, 310 feet tall. It's a 300 foot drop that's 80 degrees, so like this. And uh, you hit about 93 miles an hour. It's extremely fast, very smooth, really well built, uh, really fun. I'm, I think I'm going to go wait in line for that because the Steel Vengeance is like a 180 minute wait right now, so it's just too long. This one's still like 45 minutes, so I think I'll go back in and do that. And it's only 93 miles per hour. Well, about two minutes after I got off, the train got stuck going up the hill, and it's been there for about, I'd say, 10 minutes now. Pretty interesting. Glad I wasn't on it. It's not cool that it's stuck, but it's still an incredible ride. I loved it. I would do it again in a heartbeat, but I'm going to go find something else. So I decided to stay and see how they rescue them. It's like they use that little cart. Pretty handy. We got it fixed. So this is Rogaru, something like that. I think this is my next ride. Fifteen minutes is way better. So I just stopped and talked to the girl that lets everyone in and last night Sasha and I kept hearing the rides running long past closing time. They close at 8 but we heard the roller coaster still going at like 10.15. So I asked her what that was all about and she said that that's a special ride night they do every, hold on, every two to three weeks for staff only because they... never gets to ride because they're always working. So I think that's pretty cool. So while I like the motion of the ride, it's very bumpy and my head is slamming back and forth. You can tell it's getting old. I'm gonna catch the train and go meet Sasha for lunch. And then I'm gonna come back into the park and try to do more rides later. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main midway. Please remain seated until the train comes to a complete and final stop. Please remain seated until the train comes to a complete and final stop. I got off the train but didn't make it here in time to get through. I have to wait for the train now. I'm almost back and we got really lucky with our site because it's one of the closest sites. There's the park, so I have to walk through that parking lot. And then, there's our camper. So it makes it much easier to come back and forth.
Sasha. Um, I'm back in the park. I ended up making a bunch of phone calls because Steel Vengeance, you're not allowed to bring anything on it. No hats, no phones, no wallets, nothing. But it didn't look like they provided a place to put it. So that means I would have had to have left everything at the camper, come in, done the ride, gone back and gotten my stuff, and then come back. But after like an hour of phone calls and talking to people, I discovered that they do have free lockers. I feel like I keep running into this train. It's always blocking my way. All right, I just confirmed with the ride operator. They have free lockers. I can put my stuff in it. They've changed the rules like 10 times in the last two years. Uh, I guess the big problem is people bring their stuff on and then it gets ejected on the ride and it hits people. Which, come to find out, two days ago, uh, today's Tuesday, so on Sunday, they closed down one of their, their most popular rides, which is the Top Thrill Drag Coaster, which is one of the main reasons I wanted to come here. Because a woman got hit in the head by something metal being ejected from the ride. Chances are it was a cell phone, but uh, no reports of that yet. So I'm not gonna be able to ride that. I don't think they're gonna reopen it, probably because it's down for investigation. But uh, this should be good. This is my first time. This is like a hybrid coaster. It's a wooden frame and a steel track. I can't wait. That ride was incredible. It's probably my favorite one here so far. You should definitely check out the video in the links below. It's called Steel Vengeance. It's brilliantly designed. I really liked it. It was really, really good. Nice and smooth too. I'm gonna go back and ride that again. I'll see you in a bit. One more time. This ride is a lot of fun because you get to race with the other people and it goes pretty fast. And the reason it's so loud because there is a roller coaster going on right now. This Wicked Twister roller coaster behind me is going to be retired in September. It's like 20 years old and this will be the only time I ever have to ride it. So I'm going to go jump on it. I've been enjoying very short wait times. Well, I had a great day, I got a lot done, and I got kind of a black eye for it. On my very last ride, I went through a swarm of what I assume are like black flies or some type of small bug. Got me right in the eye. So, 
let that heal up. I'm gonna go back and eat dinner. It's like 8.20, 8.30, and I'm tired, I'm hot, I'm sweaty, and I'm very, very hungry, and my eyes a little uncomfortable. It's been a great time. I'm super happy that the rides weren't really busy today. I got a lot in and I uh, was pretty happy about that. All right, so I saved this monster for last. Originally, when I was walking through the park, I thought it was just kind of a kid's ride. But when I got up really close to it, I could tell that it was pretty huge. I saw the giant air storage tanks on the side and it made me curious how it worked. So I did a little research on it. I found out that this entire ride is air operated and it's massive. <laughs> The air is provided by four Ingersoll Rand air compressors that pump out almost 1400 CFM at 120 PSI. In between rides, it's recharging those massive air tanks on the side. While I love the technology of the modern roller coasters, seeing this in operation reminded me more of something from the steam age. Like a big steam shovel or an old steam train. I'm always amazed at how much power can be produced with air. Well guys, it's almost eight o'clock again and the park's closing. Today was our final day and we moved the camper out of the campground and just parked it in the parking lot for the day. So we're all packed up. We're gonna go spend the night at Walmart and then we're gonna head off to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan tomorrow at some point. So thanks for watching. I will leave all of those links to the rides in the description below. And uh, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. I know this isn't our normal content, but I appreciate you watching all the way to the end. Give it a thumbs up and it really helps us. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.